Good day to everybody around the world. I am so unbelievably excited today to share this time with a woman who has been a mentor in my life. Now, this lady you might have gone to bed with, you might have had a bath with, and you might have had a baby with, because she is the founder of The White Company, internationally renowned, hugely successful British business, which is distributed throughout the world nearly, and we'll go into more of that later. She's uh, got a Order of the British Empire. She has been honored by the Queen. She is involved in numerous charitable foundations, including her initiative with the Prince's Trust, which is um, also the White Heart Foundation. She is just tremendously unassuming and a little bit nervous to do this chat, I'm going to say, because I think it's important that we're really real as women. So without further ado, I'm going to say welcome, Chrissy Rucker. <laughs> Hello, my dear Chrissy. How are you? <laughs> Okay, you're making me confront my biggest fear, which is doing a live stream. And you know, that's heartfelt to hear because I think so many women want to give an impression of hiding things they're nervous about, Chrissy, and it makes other women feel they can never get somewhere. You know, because it's like the more we are not truly real about things, the harder it is for women to strive for things. I think it's a dishonor to our own sex. <laughs> but that's just, you know, I just feel that very strongly. And you have been such a, I just want to start this off, Chrissy, and just to say thank you to you, because you, you know, I, I, I came, you know, we met one another when I won one of the awards of the um, NatWest Awards. And you, you know, for a year gave your time to introduce me to elements of business, which I didn't know. And you have been such a big help for me. And whenever I do an interview, Chrissy, and I and they say, you know, who's inspires you, you are at the top of my list. Every time I've done a few interviews the last few weeks, I just keep saying, Chrissy Rucker, Chrissy Rucker, Chrissy. So I'm so excited that you said yes, but I just want to start off and I just want to say hello to everybody who's joining us because we've got lots of people joining us. And just to say good morning from around the world, from Germany, from Saudi Arabia, from, I mean, we'll have probably at the end of this, Chrissy, we'll have 120 countries, which is just the wonder of social media because I know that you as a brand are in, how many countries is is uh, the white company in now? Well, we, well, Quite a few. I mean, obviously, the beauty of digital is that, you know, the world is your oyster. So, but predominantly, we're in Europe and America, Australia, um, Ireland, basically, anywhere who'd like to order, we can ship to. You ship worldwide. Um, so I'm just going to start us off and just say, this is a question that, you know, when I was thinking of questions for you, it's very, it's very difficult to think, what are questions that you have been asked before, Chrissy, and that feel appropriate for what we're talking about. But I wanted to start with that sense of when you first felt you were a success, because I think how women judge themselves is very interesting. So I'd just love you to tell me about that moment. I never really think there is one defining moment at all where you think you're a success. It's, you know, building a business is a journey. So it's lots of small, but really, really important moments along the way. I think, you know, for us, it's everything from printing that very first tiny, tiny brochure, moving into our first office. I mean, that was a momentous occasion uh, from going from an attic room, uh, opening first store, um, starting online, uh, you know, getting our website up and running. And then of course, recently more, it's been developing our international. You know, when you can see your team are fired up, yeah. working brilliantly together and you have a vision you've created together that is so exciting mm -hmm. um, you meet challenges the whole time the single most important thing Trini for every brand is is you know you know it's going in the right direction when your customers tell you that that they like what you're doing I think that's and you know yeah. when you can see they're happy yeah, yeah. And you get that affirmation that what you truly believed in your heart, you wanted to launch as a vision, other people get. I think that's such a connecting moment between a founder of a brand and its customer. I, I That I, I get a little bit, you know, I, I get the, when you feel the love of the customer. Yeah, and, um, yeah. I think that's, that's most, yeah, and, yeah, and, and you're also, it's, you're a very intimate part of people's lives as well. You know, I think that's, 
interesting just the intimacy so when I introduced you and I said you know the sort of you're with uh, with you at every stage of a journey the white company feels that but do you think that makes a difference to a brand that you you know you're not well I don't think you do sell pots and pans everything feel yeah, everything is quite intimate oh gosh I mean I think for me it's been such a personal journey mm. um from uh you know because because we you it has grown really with my life, and um, with that, when you when you talk about because you are a mother, you have four children. Yes, four children, yeah. um, and your husband also has Charles Tyrrell. So, so you're both founders. Um, but how do you, you know, the work life balance is one of the most, you know, probably frequent, most frequently asked questions. But what do you feel are good tips or or you know, when you're thinking about when you feel most guilty or not guilty, how do you deal with all of that? I think that's just, it's an open-ended question, Chrissy, take it. I think you have to forget about finding that sort of perfect work-life balance. I don't think it really exists. You know, I mean, I felt guilty last night. My daughter was giving me a hard time because, you know, I was trying to actually organize my thoughts and for today. Yeah. And, but listen, I think, I think the whole way through the journey, there are times when you feel like you're doing everything badly. Mm -hmm. And, and you gradually learn to navigate it. You know, I've had to learn to manage time. Uh, yeah. My life has run off a spreadsheet. Um, stress. Um, I, I went to a stress doctor about five years ago. I had three sessions with him. And honestly, it was the most life-changing thing. So no, to no, no, I, I want to understand a stress doctor. So a qualified doctor specializing in stress. Why do a stress doctor is probably the wrong word. Anyway, but I, I, I love that. I love what the label you've given it because to me, I want to see him now. Yeah, <laughs> I'll send you his number. He's yeah. very, very good. Um, and he basically, he basically sort of, I sat down with him and he just got me to talk. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, "Goodness, I'm not surprised you're stressed." <laughs> and he just gave me some coping mechanisms. Yeah. And you know, a huge part of that actually was unplugging unplugging, mm -hmm. learning to manage time, learning to take on a few sort of stress busting mechanisms that worked for me. And, you know, making sure I made clear time. This was work time. This was family. Mm -hmm. time, and this is home time. And, you know, basically, you have to learn to say no, you have to, you can't do everything you wish yeah. you could you have to set your priorities each year. I, I, my sister in law draw, draw that thing on a on a piece of paper, mm. put five things in the top right hand corner, then your next five things, then your next five things, and then your next five things. And then you basically do the top right hand corner. And that's how you help to prioritize. Ten years ago I had a time where I very nearly sold the business. I, I felt I was really letting my family down and uh you know, I really wanted my children to say, yes, mum, we want you at home much more. But they didn't yeah. at all. They said, no, you know, we, you know, keep working, mum. And, and, and then they very sort of sweetly said, you know, we're really proud of what you do. And so, you know, that that was very special. So when you got to that place, do you think, because I think sometimes we can tell ourselves messages to an extent where we reinforce an argument inside our head without actually checking up on how other people really feel. You know, we'll, we'll play the movie forward. I think it's just, um, you know, I, I suppose, you know, having had my husband, that's been, you know, that's to understand each other's businesses is, is a very special special thing. And we, we talk about experience, we, issues, we share experience. Mm -hmm. Nick started two years before me, so he had, He'd been through all of that sort of early stage, yeah. Um, to you know all those terrible insecurities, and I think you know when you're, you know when you're looking for a mentor, it's great to have somebody who is a, just a couple of years ahead of you. Is he still your mentor? I mean, when you when you say th th he was then, but do you feel do you feel equal in your business discussions now? I was very happy to see him. <laughs> He did. He he was. He did an article, I think, for one of the papers recently, and he finally admitted that I was probably his his you know 
it's most used mental only because I'm at home with him, I think. But I mean, completely. I mean, we don't compete. He's been the mm -hmm. most incredible support. And I think, you know, fundamentally, the most important thing he's ever given me is he was there saying to me when I had the idea, he said, mm -hmm. you can do this. And he gave me the confidence that yeah. um, I could start. Maybe for other women out there, Chrissy, who are thinking of starting something and going back to when you started the White Company. I was a journalist before. Um, I had five fantastic years on magazines. And, and, you know, I look back at that experience as just being unbelievably invaluable. I mean, today, you know, 27 years later, I still go back to skills I learned in those jobs. Yeah. Um, you know, Nick was starting his business. Um, he just moved house. He asked me if I could help. And I thought, you know, gosh, I'm a journalist. I'm working on a magazine. This is going to be so easy. Um, and it was a disaster, an absolute mm -hmm. disaster. I went shopping. He moved in. I think he had a bed. He had four chairs. He had chipped mugs from the garage. Burgundy bed linen. Oh, and, yeah. and when I set off to go shopping, I basically discovered two very clear ends were available at that time. So you had designer, beautifully made, lots of gorgeous detail, very expensive. Mm -hmm. Well, you had High Street, which was poor quality, no design, much, much more affordable. And I also mm -hmm. had a pretty woman moment, a pretty woman moment where I had a very snooty sales assistant. She sort of waved me off to the cheap end of, of, of the store. Mm -hmm. So I discovered, you know, setting up a home is daunting and it's expensive. So, you know, I wanted to be able to offer inspiration to people. And mm -hmm. I also wanted to make sure that we had a product range that would stand the test of time, be great mm -hmm. quality of and last. And I think, you know, the beauty of white for me anyway, is that, whoever we are, wherever we live, it just works in our homes in mm -hmm. some way. And today, hectic world, constant connectivity, lockdown. Um, and the beautiful relationship that White has with calm and creating a home that we love mm -hmm. just feels more relevant and more important than ever. Well, and so, so I think, about, Chrissy, I mean, like, it's interesting because I don't think the white company I see as a name, all right, but I I don't consciously think when I go in that everything's going to be white. So until you've just said that to me just now, so that was obviously a part of that launch is that everything is white because it's so, um, it works so consistently. Yeah. So so if that's one of the sort of brand values, you must have gone over that at some stage or, or would you actually say everything is still white? We definitely, we have a few sort of neutrals now. Okay. But was that difficult? Like when you were making that decision to, because yeah. it, it must have been such a, a thing for you as a fundamental part of the brand. So when you, how do you feel when you kind of stretch it in a way? Well, I, I think, I mean, I did, a, I did my first book last year and we called it the white and neutral home. And I think for me, white is a sort of, it's a mood, it's emotion, it's a feeling. Mm -hmm. And it's that sort of spa-like calmness. So I would say the product range today is probably 80% white. Yeah. And the rest are sort of, you know, gentle neutrals, naturals, mm. the odd bit of blue. It's a very, very loved brand internationally, which is so brilliant to see. Um, I think that I get this and you get this too. Of You know, you start, you think you have a good idea and you, you wanna start something. And it's that you have worked very, very hard for many, many years to make that come to life. But when you're thinking about how careful you are with the brand image and how important it is to keep the integrity of that, because you're now, how many hundred people do you employ? We fluctuate because we, yeah. we have seasonal stuff, but, but well over 2000 well over 2,000, so 2,000 people, all to one extent or another, representing your brand, okay? Um, how do you 
deal with keeping the integrity of what you believe the white company stands for as a company and for every customer to to see that with that bigger team as we've gone on our journey we've definitely had phases where we've slipped and we've we've lost our way slightly and I, i've sort of i think i've come to realize that the secret to it is having a absolutely crystal clear long-term vision you have to have mm. dream what do you want to look like in 10 years time and then you need the business plan that takes you to three or five years time and mm. if you build that and create it with your team it gets everybody on board and it helps mm. you all to stay on track yeah so it's keeping that vision consistent alive and in the room instead of it disappearing so i think i mean i'm i did a sort of you know a brand bible you know with my new marketing person because they said i want to understand they came in three years into the two years into business so we did it and then we looked at it again this year so three years in was trini london but still looking at that and thinking is that still really true and if elements of those aren't what how do we draw back people in so it luckily everything holds true still but i know looking at a company like yours and taking that advice from you chrissy of how important that is because otherwise you're just diluting what you are and and compared to your competitors and i kind of can't see which competitors you have in your area i think you're still 100 unique you do so much for other people and that's how i first came to meet you and i just want to ask at what stage in your career did you want to start giving back you know how much did you have to achieve yourself sort of mentally physically financially whatever the benchmarks might have been before you felt ready grown up mature experienced enough financially liquid enough you know what was that point for you because i think i'm really interested to know that yeah i know i'm really interested in that well you know i think i mean if we take the princess trust for example which you know um you know, we're just about to launch the change a girl's life campaign i got involved with the princess trust probably I think 13 or 14 years ago and when I first got involved I didn't have the time or the capacity to give to give me or my time but what we did was we you know we found a cause we really believed in and yeah. we started raising money for it as a team yeah. so that's you know that's a really nice way to start and and it doesn't it doesn't take over your life um you know, today I'm 52, the business is more established. And um, it's the project that we're doing is something that I believe so passionately in. Um, so I'm putting a lot more time and energy into it now. But it, but it's, it, you know, it's, it, it's an absolute pleasure to do that. I mean, I think over the years, we've always been a brand that's had um, we we started the White Heart Foundation, and we've always had three or four charities um, each year that we've been yeah running that you committed. What and how many years after how many years the brand did you start that? We 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 probably started doing activity. I mean, to I mean to be honest, when you have a brand, I think the minute you start, people start saying. Yes, it, yeah, yeah, um, and it just started slowly, and it's grown over yeah. time. And tell me, with the Change a Girl's Life campaign, because um, there are many initiatives, and you chose this as an initiative. Will you just tell everybody a little bit about it? Because I think it's really interesting that people would understand it better, Chrissy. I think, you know. Today, I mean, right now, young women in the UK are disproportionately disadvantaged to young men. And this was the case before COVID-19. But now, after this last year, it's exacerbated further. And the facts, the facts are stark. 78% um, of job losses at the start were female. Mm. And two thirds of these are between the ages of 18 and 24. Well, no, that is that is a hideously large stat. Nearly two million women have lost income. They're worried about their future. You know, the, how are they going to find a job? They're worrying about it. The International Monetary Fund has warned this crisis 
threatens to roll back the years, the last 30 years of the economic gains we've made for women. Mm. And the impact on mental health is absolutely enormous. Mm. Now, it's been a tough, tough year for, for many, but for the vulnerable young and the young who are reaching out to the Prince's Trust, life is harder than ever before. Mm. Um, yet, you know, they are absolutely incredible. I mean, when you meet them and when you... So how do you help these women? What happens? My view is, you know, I wouldn't be here without all the wonderful help that I've received along the way. Yeah. And, you know, today, it, it's, it's, it's really awful to see some of the things that are going on. And, and not everybody has this kind of support as they're growing up or as they start a business. Mm -hmm. The young women we help at the Prince's Trust are incredible, the challenges they face. So we're talking domestic and sexual violence, we're talking long-term mm -hmm. unemployment, bullying, homelessness, the mm -hmm. challenges of single parenthood. So that could be living in a single parent family or it could be being a single parent yourself. And some of them have no emotional support at home. And, you know, during the pandemic, the Prince's Trust, you know, they, they, they tell me that some of the young people they support, the only person they speak to is their Prince's Trust mentor. So the change of girls... That is just, I mean, that is really cool. And, and but, but what, I, what I would say is, you know, when they, when they come to the Prince's Trust, the change that they can mm -hmm. go through is phenomenal. So the Change Girls Life campaign, we've got 70 incredible brands and they're brands that are run by women and they're brands that are run by men. And mm -hmm. we are all committed to driving change. And our aim simply is we're gonna raise money and that will provide access to free courses at the Prince's Trust. And at the Prince's Trust, they can also find support to rebuild lost confidence to to get help to gain new skills and then this will help them to move forward into a job um, or going back to college or further education and or to become self-employed like you and me and you know run your own business and make your business work around your life and there's also access to mentors um, so you know just that having that ability to talk and talk things through and I've been a patron for a long time, and honestly, the work is totally life-changing. And, you know, Trini, I know you've been involved. Thank mm. you. Um, at the White Company for the Change Your Girl Life campaign, we're doing Light a Candle and Change Your Life. And, you know, from every candle we sell, uh, small ones, big ones, um, five pounds will be going. Uh, we have this Absolutely. tiny little kiss necklace here. Um, which um, we're donating £20 from each of those. Um, and we have brilliant, brilliant brands, uh, you know, from ASOS, Amazon, John Lewis, River Island, to brilliant designers, Bella Freud, Rose Uniac, Mishka Jewelry, and lots of beauty people from Nails Inc., Victoria Beckham, Sarah Chapman, you. If anyone who would like to support this initiative or even be involved, there's a lot of people saying, I'm a counsellor in Leeds and I'd love to know how I can help. Um, you know, there are a lot of women on here, Chrissy, who really love to give back. You know, it is an amazing initiative. I have to say, listening to you, Chrissy, and just those stats you gave, a lot of women saying those stats are just horrific. And it would be appalling if, because of COVID, the sort of equal opportunity of women goes backwards. I mean, it would be the worst, worst thing that would happen and, yeah. and just to have that awareness and to give these women on the real what I call on the on the front line of being affected by COVID um, opportunity. It's please get in touch and yeah. you know, whether you and your business can get involved and also if you're mm -hmm. a young woman you're struggling please get in touch and reach out to the Princess Trust because there's some amazing help and resources available. It's been so inspiring talking to you, Chrissy. I could talk to you for hours. I'd love to ask you 101 other questions, um, but maybe there'll be a part two. Um, and I think it's, you know, it is so important for us to listen to, you know, women's careers and their lives, because 
it gives other women listening who maybe are feeling flat or not knowing what direction they want to go or what they want from their life. It just gives them more information to make better informed decisions. And um, I think that this lockdown has, has put people in a lot of situations apart from the women you're talking about and the girls you're talking about from the Prince's Trust, but other people at home think reevaluating a lot of things. And, and one of those will be do I want to give up my career? Do I want to start something myself? What does that look like? You know, so so it's really important to look at what what you know. I know I could never be anything other than the entrepreneur I am today, and I I know that, I know you know that. But that first step is such a hard step to take. It's such a risky step. It's it's like a you know jumping in the swimming pool and holding your breath. Step. Um, but so truly, more, you know, yeah. as as challenging as this year has been, and there are some devastating impacts but out of it some really great things will come mm. and change will happen and we will recover and it will drive exciting and needed change and and i think all of our lives will be shaped slightly differently we'll all do things slightly yeah. different i think we will um Chrissy, my dear, uh, thank you so much. And um, let's give it up for Chrissy Rucker. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening in today. And we'll catch up again soon.